Now your forecast first, sponsored by Natex Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Good evening to you. The snow continues to fly across central Illinois, and you can see how the radar is depicting the different types of precipitation. The blue here is your snow. You get down here, some pink, maybe some sleet. Green is rain, and it has been mainly rain for areas closer to I-70 with all snow. Areas from Champaign back to Springfield and Decatur up to Watsika and Danville. We zoom in a little bit closer, you get some of these darker blue bands. That's some heavier snow. Clinton over around Argenta to Monticello and then also over into Vermilion County near Danville. We're seeing the snow and then we widen the view out and yes, there is a little bit of a break showing up here down to the south, but we still have several more hours of the snow that's going to continue to move through. But now the temperature is starting to fall. It's now 31 in Champaign as that occurs that slush that's out there, the very wet snow, that's really going to start to freeze over and cause more issues on area roads as the snow continues into the overnight. The latest on amounts, and of course, you know we've got your team coverage coming up. WCA 3 News starts right now. Now on WCIA 3 News. Back in our storm tractor, continue to look at uh, road conditions across Central Illinois as things become slushy this evening. I saw that the back door was kicked in, uh, standing open part ways. A rash of break-ins Tuesday night in Champaign. Why it appears those responsible weren't concerned about the police. And we're learning more about a murder investigation in Champaign County. How many DNA samples were collected to try and track down the killer. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6. We said it was coming, and that snow is falling in central Illinois tonight. Good evening. I'm Paul Cicchini. And I'm Jessica Coons. Jennifer is off tonight. Depending on where you are, it could be as much as five inches before all is said and done. From rain to snow, what you get, it all depends on where you live. We have team coverage of tonight's weather. WCI 3's Chief Meteorologist Kevin Letty's in the Tracking Center. Forecaster Amelia Henderson is in studio with us tonight. Meteorologist Jack Griffin's in the Storm Tracker. Now, first to Kevin. We did this once before, but what does tonight look like with this snowfall? Well, yeah, it was a week ago. We were dealing with the snow across the area, and here we go once again. There's your winter weather advisory covering a lot of the counties. You can see down near Effingham, not so much of an issue down there. But let's take a look at some of our camera views here, and that's in Champaign. Look at that one. That's along I-57. Look at the snow being blown. You can see the snowflakes there. The wind is going to pick up. That's going to cause issues, and we have our coverage all the way to Jacksonville, where you can see also the snow on some of the uh, side roads. And then there again in Springfield, look out for some of those exit ramps there along I-72 that have snow on them as well. There's a look at the satellite and radar picture with lots of snow still to come. That is out to our west. And another view was going to take us to Gibson City. Look at the, you can see where the, the cars have uh, drove in the streets there, the snow-covered roads in Gibson City. But we take you to meteorologist Jack Gerfin. He is in the storm tracker. Jack, where are you at and how are conditions? Okay, uh, so uh, Jack out there in the storm tracker again, uh, having some uh, issues there with the uh, signal there at times, but here's the thing. We know that Jack has been out there. He has mentioned that those roads have been very wet. Um, they have been um, to where they haven't been too bad for on the main roads, but you get on those side roads and it's a little bit of an issue. And I think we've got uh, Jack back here with us now. Jack, uh, what do you got out there tonight? Well, uh, before I cut out, I just uh, was saying that I'm in the northern side of Danville. I'm on Vermilion Street 136 heading north. And um, when I was on the interstate driving to uh, Danville from Champaign, the roads were uh, just kind of wet. And once I got into Danville, the uh, situation in Danville was very similar to what it was in Champaign. All the heavily traveled roads, just kind of slushy. But now I'm on 136 heading now more towards the outskirts of Danville on the north side here. Still, things are pretty covered. More than anything else, though, it's slushy. But people are taking it slow. I only saw a couple of accidents out there. Um, there's mainly just been uh, one or two spin-outs that I saw on 74. But uh, we're watching the things um, kind of deteriorate now as temperatures are cooling off. And I will say this, Kevin, that um, we did have 
the snow come down harder last time than we had today, but we are expecting a larger amount of snow for today. So we'll wrap it back up here in the uh, storm tracker and send it off to you in the studio. Thanks a lot, Jack. We'll check back with him a little bit later. Own Amelia Henderson as well. He's got more on the road conditions coming up here, and we've got the latest on the snowfall amounts in the forecast here in just a little bit. Back to you, Jess. All right, Kevin, we'll see you then. For an update on school and business closings, you can watch the bottom of your screen or download the WCIA 3 News app. Champaign police are investigating after three businesses were broken into last night. Yeah, all of them were in the same block, almost right next to each other. They're also within yards of the police station. Manzella's Buyer's Vacuum Repair and Ipatsu Salon were all targeted. WCI 3's Courtney Bunting joins us now. So, Courtney, this person did not get away with much. Right, Paul. Whoever did this only got away with about $200, but they went to a lot of trouble to get it. And now some of these businesses are spending more on repairs than what was taken. They say bad things happen at night, but as that's like not calling it night, that's calling it dark. Mary Manzella closed down her family's restaurant Tuesday, just like she does every night. But she noticed it was darker than usual. The lights were all off along the front street, first street, and along the side over here, which is um, Chester Street, and it was very dark. She didn't think much of it until she came back Wednesday morning and realized they'd been broken into. Fortunately, nothing was missing, not even the loose coins that were, you know, in the till of the drawers. Went to a lot of work for nothing. They caught the suspect on camera only for a moment. And it wasn't long before they realized they weren't alone. John Byers' business is right next door. I saw that the back door was kicked in, uh, standing open part way. They did not uh, take any vacuum cleaners or sewing machines or anything. It's unfortunate. Um, I'm glad, uh, you know, that more damage wasn't done. Ipatsu Salon is across the street. Someone also broke their door and took around $200 in cash. They have security cameras, too, that are supposed to record 24-7, but the system stopped recording during the break-in. Manzella says she hopes the streetlights will be working again soon, because otherwise, this may happen again. We know for two, at least two nights that they've been down. Me leaving here alone, it's just kind of like, you know, it's a very uncomfortable situation. And police say they are looking into these break-ins, but they don't have a suspect at this time. They are asking anyone within that surrounding area to share any security camera footage that they might have. Reporting live in the control room, Courtney Bunting, WCIA3, your local news leader. Courtney, that's amazing that the security footage just cut out when that person was in the, in the yeah, salon. Yeah, strange. I'd like to see the answer behind that. Yeah, hopefully, uh, well, if you get it, definitely share it with us. All right, Courtney, thanks. Well, it was a little less than a year ago, you may remember, that someone drove a car into Manzella's. That person was ticketed for a DUI. The restaurant had to close for a day to make some repairs. Here's an update from court now. We have a bigger, a bigger picture of the lengths to which investigators went to before they arrested Michael Henslick for the murder of Holly Cassano. Cassano was found dead in her Muhammad home in 2009. If convicted, Henslick could spend the rest of his life in prison. WCI 3's Aaron Aids has been following this case. He's live in our newsroom tonight. Aaron, investigators collected DNA from more than 100 people. Yeah, Jessica, more than 150 people. That's what Champaign County Sheriff's Office investigators testified they did over almost 10 years of working the case, but only one of those DNA profiles led to an arrest. Today, the jury was shown cigarette butts they say Hensley flicked away, which allowed them to build his DNA profile. But at this point of the trial, prosecutors have not yet explained how Hensley became became a suspect in the first place. The jury heard extensive testimony from the autopsy doctor who examined Cassano's body. While the courtroom saw graphic pictures of her estimated 55 to 60 stab wounds, the examiner said the killer managed to stab all the way through her breastbone, which he says would have required a severe amount of force. Listen as state's attorney Julia Reitz asks the examiner about that. Did it appear that Ms. Cassano struggled with her assailant? Yes, she essentially fled to death from these feet, start four step. And would that be consistent then with the size of a standard steak knife, a five-inch wound? Right, a, a, a standard kitchen single-edge steak knife that's about five inches, give or take, cost those wounds, yes.
Now, Reed's brought up the steak knife because yesterday she and her assistant showed pictures of a knife block from Cassano's kitchen that had some empty slots. In her opening statement, that's where she claimed Hensley got the murder weapon from. But his defense team pushed back on that, saying there was no way of telling whether there was a full set of knives there to begin with. Now, his defense also spent time today trying to poke holes in the testimony of an analyst who investigated the blood stains in Cassano's house. They said he couldn't tell where the blood came from or how much there really was. Now, before court dismissed for today, we also saw the beginning of the interview between Henslick and the investigators. The state claims he admits guilt. His defense claims it should be viewed with skepticism. We're expecting to see that video tomorrow. Live in the newsroom, Aaron Eads, WCIA 3, your local news leader. All right, Aaron, thanks for the update. A leader in Vermilion County died this week after a long battle with cancer. Vicki Hogan worked as Vermilion County's economic development leader for 38 years. She joined the Danville Group in 1982. In 2002, she became the founding president and CEO of Vermilion Advantage. Funeral services will be private and a public celebration of Hogan's life will be held at a later date. Hey, it's a happy birthday to the man for which this state is famous. How Abraham Lincoln was honored on his 211th birthday. Also tonight. All I have in my mind is just praying for him, praying for him. The game may have been lost, but that wasn't the main concern. The latest on the injury to Illinois' Io DeSumo. And the snow continues to fly across the area tonight as temperatures continue to fall. On the roofing the guy at Gibson Area Hospital camera, 31 degrees. We're coming back with the latest on the snowfall totals.